We are going on an adventure. Hi friends, we are on the Isle of Aran and we're about to go walk up to King's Cave. King's Cave is rumored to have been one of the places that Robert the Bruce fled to and hid out in. So what happened was Robert the Bruce had just been crowned king. That really pissed off Edward I of England. So Edward I, as you do, sends an army and Robert the Bruce was defeated. It actually was a really brutal defeat for Bruce because his brother was executed in an incredibly horrible way. So he had to flee from the English. This is where he came, maybe. So let's, we're about to go to the cave, come with me. So I'm actually a descendant of Robert the Bruce and I always love going to places where I feel like I have a tie. Robert the Bruce is one of Scotland's most famous kings and for a good reason. As I was doing research on Robert the Bruce, we came across this incredible story. So as I was just telling you, Robert the Bruce was defeated by Edward I and fled. He had, his brother was brutally executed. He sent his wife and his children into exile. And he really was at the lowest point in his life. Now we're walking to this cave. There's several places where this could have happened, but let's pretend for a minute using our little make-believe hat that he did come here. We're here, we're in King's Cave, and we might actually be standing in the very place that Robert the Bruce hid. Even if he didn't hide in this cave, it's incredible. The history, you can feel it in here. All along the walls, on each side of the cave, you can see different graffiti. You see an 1892 carving, different names. There's even a giant cross here. So the legend has it that after Robert the Bruce was defeated, he fled to a cave. Let's pretend it was here. He was, it was the most difficult part of his life. He'd been defeated in battle. He was crowned king, but a lot of the chief, chiefs didn't really follow him. While he was here, he saw a spider weaving a web. And the spider kept falling down over and over again, but it kept going back up and continuing to weave its web. It's said that Robert the Bruce found incredible inspiration from this, and you may have even heard this saying before, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And this cave and that spider led him 
to go back again and fight against the British. And it was the first time that Scotland had been independent from England. island is so amazing. It's a kidney shape and it's said to be a little version of Scotland. You have literally every single type of flora and fauna. You have mountains, you have beaches, you have cliffs, you've got seals, you've got sheep, you've got deer. Absolutely incredible everything you can see. It is my favorite time, it is castle time. And there are actually three castles on the Isle of Arran. Brodick Castle, Locranza Castle, and Kildonan Castle. Right now, we are at Locranza Castle. This castle was originally built in the 13th century and was owned by the McSween clan. The McSween clan was incredibly powerful. They controlled lands on the Isle of Arran and lands all the way through Argyll, from Loch Awe all the way to Loch Fyne, which is a seriously big area of land. By 1262, Locranza Castle was given to Walter Stewart. This is important because some very big things transpired because of this castle trading hands. Walter Stewart eventually had a son named John. And this very John was instrumental in major events that shaped Scottish history. John was the one who betrayed William Wallace. Yep, that William Wallace, the one from Braveheart. He turned him over to the English, who then hanged, drawn, and quartered William. John was a major supporter of our very own Robert the Bruce, and it's even thought that King Robert visited this castle in 1306. Well, you remember the McSweens. The McSweens ended up being bitter rivals with the Stuarts and took sides against them and ultimately against Robert the Bruce. The castle then was passed to Robert II, Robert the Bruce's grandson. Robert II's parents were Marjorie, Robert the Bruce's oldest daughter, and another Walter Scott. Now, just a little bit of history for you. When we were over in the cave, we were talking about the battle that Robert lost, and then he fled from Scotland to, well, at that time, his wife and his daughters were taken into hiding. They got captured by the English, and they were actually imprisoned for seven years. Marjorie was in a convent for seven years. At one point, Edward I even built a cage for her to be displayed and humiliated by. He later thought better of that, but seven years of imprisonment, and then she married Walter Stewart, who lived in this very building. Holy moly, talk about your Scottish weather. An hour ago it was completely sunny and we were shooting over there. And now we're at, you can see it right there, that is Kildonan Castle. It's actually covered by houses and there's no real way up there. We're physically on the beach. Uh, so that's as close as we can get to that one. Kildonan Castle was built in the 1200s by the MacDonald clan, who were the Lord of the Isles. The Lord of the Isles is a title that goes back farther than even the Kingdom of Scotland. The castle itself was named after St. Donan, who was a Gaelic priest in the Middle Ages and died around 617 AD. And it's said that his body is buried somewhere nearby the castle. There are several different legends of how St. Donan was martyred. 
One is that a Pictish queen had him and 150 others burnt. Another one says that robbers from the sea came while he was doing mass, and he asked that they not kill him until after the mass was finished. So they allowed him to continue, and as soon as he was finished, they killed St. Donan and 52 other monks. The castle would have been quite a sight from the sea and would have been a perfect place for small ships to land. The castle's final owner was Robert the Bruce's great-grandson, King Robert III. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you do, give it a like and a subscribe. And I'm Evelyn Edwards, and this is Queen of the Castles.